Matt Patricia, what are you hearing? So here's the deal with Matt Patricia. The Detroit Lions had Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell is the salt of the earth. Nice yeah. man, really treated his guys like professionals, and he won at Detroit. So there are a lot of players that really bought into the way that they went about doing their business sure, he's in Detroit prior to Matt Patricia shows up. Matt Patricia shows up the Patriot way. It's a little harder, um, maybe a little more fear-based than warm and fuzzy. Uh, players are having a tough time trying to embrace the style because they had success the previous way. And so when someone comes in, holds them maybe a little firmer, makes it a little more contentious, um, you want to see the results. And what has happened over the course of training camp and the like, you just wonder what we're doing, is it going to pay off? Because it's All hard work. Extra- Look, we've heard it. We've heard them talk about the sprints and the running and – Everything. Everybody has talked about that part of it. I thought it was telling. Uh, there was a quote today from Glover Quinn talking about, look, it's a little different, but it's football. We have to play football. You don't necessarily have to enjoy all those other things. If you read between the lines, the players aren't really enjoying the process. And then when you get smoked like they got smoked on Monday night, the credibility begins to come in. This game against the 49ers is huge because if you go 0-2. And, and you get And you get routed. Yeah, You'll have guys bail. Yeah, th- those guys will look at, is what he's doing, what he's bringing in, is this ever going to work? And I know the Patriots have been extremely successful, but make no mistake, players talk. Players have also seen the Patriots disciples that have gone out of there, and they haven't won. So some of them are already looking at Matt Patricia side-eyed if they continue to do all of this extra stuff and they don't produce results right away. It could be very, very tough and and challenging in Detroit for Matt Patricia. By the way, Belichick's coaching tree, I I was saying yesterday, is that Andy Reid's tree, Tony Dungy's tree, Mike Holmgren's tree, it's more impressive. Is it this simple? It's impossible to duplicate Belichick's IQ. Yes. There there are a couple things in play. Um, When you get the assistant you don't get the bonus of Bill Belichick coming with it. Like, it's not a buy one, get one free. So you don't get him. So everyone is trying to do it like they've been taught in New England. I would say the guys who have only been in New England are at a disadvantage because they haven't seen how other organizations run. And that's how it works with a lot of these guys. Right. So there's not a a lot of perspective on, okay, there are a couple different ways that you can go about it. So if you go, and let's say New England is all business. It's a business-like operation, the way it's run. Maybe there's some fear-based stuff that's involved. Well, that's fine, but you have to win like that. It is tough to win like that. It's tough to kind of hold things over players' heads to get them to play when you don't have the pelts on the wall that Belichick has. Also, most of those assistants typically don't inherit a quarterback like Tom Brady, meaning maybe the best quarterback in the league who has embraced the style that the leader goes for. If everyone is going hard and Tom Brady says, hey, this is how we do it, everyone falls in line. Well, you have these other guys that are going with quarterbacks who are lesser quarterbacks who don't have that same weight, who can't necessarily carry the franchise and make everything right like Tom Brady has. So these assistants that come from New England, they have a tough job because authenticity is everything. And if you're not yourself, players sniff it out, and it's hard to win games when they don't believe that you're presenting what you really are. Players don't want to be called injury prone. But uh, Aaron Rodgers is not huge, and he's also a guy that often plays off script. You can't tell me the Packers' O-lines have been terrible. They've had double the number of pro bowlers up front as the Patriots. From a torn ACL in high school, clavicle, couple surgeries, uh, got concussions, torn calves, broken foot. And if you look at that play on Sunday night, that defensive lineman has one more ham sandwich last week. He weighs three pounds heavier, and we may have Aaron Rodgers out for eight weeks. I'm not saying injury prone. What I'm saying, smaller athlete who tends to, he's a little cocky and a little improvational, and I'm going to do it my way. Sometimes I think he puts himself in the crosshairs. Brady audibles out of a lot of hits. Is it unfair for me to say some of these injuries, they're on Aaron? Yeah, some of them are on Aaron. Like, it's just the way that he's built. Like, there's a reason why when we get up to the run to the draft, we always talk about height, weight, speed, size, all those other things. I think with Aaron Rodgers, um, he's, he's a nice size now. But coming out of Cal, and I did the West Coast, I looked at he and 
Alex Smith gave both. Oh, of those you did. Guys, you scouted both of them. Both of them gave them the same exact grade. Gave both of them first round grades. Like I, I thought, they were very, very similar in the way they went about it. He has bulked up. Aaron Rodgers has, and he has exceeded everyone's expectations for how he would play in the National Football League. Being at the game on Sunday night, I will say this though: I think the injury actually makes the Packers' offense more dangerous and more explosive. Because if you looked at the game in the first half versus the second half. First half, there were ebbs and flows. There was not a lot of rhythm because Aaron was playing off schedule. Second half, he runs out, has his Willis Reed moment. They play it, put him in the pistol. You notice he doesn't run around. He can't. And the ball is coming out quick on time. So this is what Greg Cosell often says. He said, listen, they're pretty good play callers in Green Bay. Sometimes Aaron's so gifted, he'll ad-lib out of it. He's the jazz musician. In the second half, they had to stay on card. Yes, and that was the difference. So – we tracked the stat on uh, the first half, like from touch to throw is around three, three and a half seconds for the Packers offense. After he got hurt, the ball was coming in, coming out at 2.7 or under. When you think about Tom Brady, Tom Brady t- typically is one of the best at getting the ball out of his hands, yeah. which is why he doesn't get hit, which is why they can beat you with the quick game. The Packers in the second half ran with the quick game. You saw the receivers get involved. You saw the receivers make run after catch yards. Those are the things that make the Packers dangerous. This actually may help the Packers because it eliminates some of the improvisation that Aaron does, and it makes them play more scripted. I think it's easier as a play caller to do it that way. I think the Packers may have fell into something that actually helps them down the road. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.